Welcome to the High Achievers Podcast, where we host extraordinary individuals who are disrupting and transforming the way we do business and the way we lead ourselves and others. Now, our today's guest will be extremely helpful to the majority of business owners and entrepreneurs who are looking to answer that big million dollar question, which is how to generate more sales and profit. Now, Martin Zeman is the founder of a London-based sales transformation consultancy, The Data Driven Era, where he helps businesses increase the performance of their sales engine by analyzing data and offering solutions based on evidence. Martin is the go-to person for many big players like Marks and Spencer, Dent, Parabas, Neopost, and others. He is also extremely involved in building network of business leaders and empowering them to take their businesses to the next level. Now, all the way from London, please help me welcome Martin Zeman. Martin, welcome. Hi, Andrea. Hi, it's good to have you on our podcast. So, Martin, you're a man of many talents, and I know that you've been obsessed with quite a few things over the past few years, but it all started with a very deep interest into data. Can you tell us a little bit more about where has that started for you? What's the story behind it? Yeah, I fell into it by accident. Uh, I came to the UK 13 years ago, straight after university, studying computer science. And I came to London not knowing uh, what I want to do, not really having any work experience. And I thought I'll be a software developer. But no one was looking for software developers without experience. Uh, so I instead got a job as a data analyst at one of the retailers over here, Marks and Spencer. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I started doing. And at the beginning, I didn't really appreciate it. But then I realized that there's this big gap between, between the people on the commercial business side uh, of, the, of the company who understand the, the business, they uh, understand the customers, they understand the product, and they have got great questions that they are asking. And then there are these amazing talent on the IT and technical side, uh, but there's this gap between the two and they don't really understand each other very well. Mm -hmm. And that was my role to be the translator between the two. So understand both worlds pretty well, not being an expert in either of them, but understanding the two of them and being able to translate uh, the world of business and world of IT slash data and bringing the answers to the, to the business leaders. Got it. And so I understand that in 2014, you founded your own sales transformation consultancy, the Data Driven Era. I love yeah. the name, by the way. And uh, that is the, the intention of the business is to help businesses maximize the growth of um, their uh, kind of their sales engine, right? And help them perform better in sales and really discover what are the gaps that are potentially either preventing them from doing so um, and then in reverse helping them um, close the gap by um, implementing the right data-driven uh, tools. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how you do that and what's the process for all those business owners out there who are looking to uh, find the answer of how to get more sales, uh, especially during these times? Wonderful. Yeah, great question. So actually, my, my initial inspiration for starting the business was uh, working for the second time with my, with my former boss. And he called me into his new company. He said, I acquired this business and I've got five data analysts in here but I don't know what's going on inside the business. So I need you to come in and sort it out. And we did that until the point when they realized that the business has got only six months uh, worth of cash flow to live. And then they, they would go bankrupt. Mm. And it was incredible. They basically said, okay, well, this is our predicament. All we can do is just like do our best to, to find out what is really going on. Because this business was going for five years and never really broke a profitable quarter they just have investors and they kept growing revenue wise growing 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 but never actually making a profit and when they realized okay well this is now die or fix it situation they started asking me 
very clear questions about like what's going on about the products, what's going on in our, inside our sales team, what's going on inside the sales pipeline, who are our best customers. And because we, at that point, we had the data available, I could give them the answers pretty much immediately. Mm-hmm. And it was mind blowing for me to see one day they would ask me a question, the second day I would give them the answer, the third day they would take action. And within three months, they completely turned the company around. And for me, this was six months, sorry, six years into my career as a data analyst. This is the first time that I truly see how much of an impact data can make. And the difference was that it was the right data at the right time, at the right hands. And this is my main point. It's so important to work with the business leaders and really the data is unlocking their potential. It's not really the potential of the data, it's the potential of the business leaders who have got the right questions, but Mm. so often they don't have the right answers or accurate answers, or they don't get the answers in a timely fashion so they can't take action uh, on the on the back of these. So the way I, I, I work with companies is basically identifying what are their business questions, what are their business problems or business opportunities that they would like to explore a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And then we take the data that we need to answer those questions and then we present them in the right fashion. And oftentimes there's a process of cleaning up the data because until you, the companies look at the data, it's not very clean. Uh, and the end goal is to build a effective reporting uh, system that is fully automated. So you don't need a data analyst who is running the reports every day for you. It's running automatically uh, because the technology is out there, but many companies don't know how proper business intelligence should look like. Got it. So you're basically uh, someone who comes into the business and helps them set those systems up in case they don't yet have them, because there's probably quite a lot of companies out there uh, running um, and, and kind of pursuing being very active or reactive, but not as much proactive when it comes to data and, and having those systems up. How would that look like if, for example, a company um, that's only starting or has been around for a while, but don't, doesn't have um, those means or hasn't set those systems up? How would that look like? In, in what way, what would you recommend them uh, to start with? Yeah, I feel a lot of companies, at least at the stage that I work with them. So my kind of sweet spot is five to 15 million turnover. So they have their established businesses, they have sales teams. uh, So they would usually have a CRM uh, tool, customer relationship management system like Salesforce or HubSpot or ActiveCampaign or Zoho. And they would collect the data, right? Like you can't really get to 5 million without having some kind of system. Of course. Usually the sales systems exist. The issue is that companies mainly focus on the output. They purely uh, focus on the revenue. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the point of the sales target being missed and you ask, why did we miss the sales target? You can't really answer why. So you can ask this to a sales team, but because sales people are just so amazing and uh, very good in answering back right away, they will just come up with the first thing that com- comes to mind. They will, they will tell, this is the reason. It's COVID, it's uh, you know, the, the competition, or it's our pricing, it's our product. But you can't really put a finger on it. And this is the thing. If the CEO or the business leader is not asking to punish someone, they don't want to say, oh, well, you did, you did wrong. The business leader is asking because they are an ultimate problem solver. They know that whatever the problem is, they can solve it. Mm. the problem is the uncertainty if they don't know what the problem is they can't solve it and that's the that's why why is the most frustrating thing if whatever it is they could solve it uh but if they don't know uh what it is that's the that's the issue so that's what i tell them i basically show them the problem is this and yeah the the way we do it basically the answers are hidden in a lower granularity. So many companies just look at the high level figures, like revenue uh, targets, or they might be looking at the revenue per person, or they might be looking at a conversion rate per salesperson. Mm -hmm. But then you can break it down by individual steps of a sales process. You can break it down by types of customers. You can break it down by products. You can look at the profitability of the product. So there's these all different lenses that you can cut the data by that really give you the insights. And if you give these insights to the business leader, they will pinpoint it and say, yeah, this is exactly it. Or they will say, hmm, interesting. Uh, I've got this hypothesis. Can you look at this, uh, this question? And then you give them the, the information and they say, okay, well now uh, 
explore it further until they get to the bottom of it, they identify the problem, and then they can take action on it. Well, Martin, you did say that the key is really in the business leader's mindset around the data and how keen or willing uh, are they to use them, right? So can you tell us a little bit about your um, connection between the data business that you're running and obviously the, the passion of networking and um, enriching or empowering business leaders to um, grow their businesses, to expand their businesses um, through your work. Um, and uh, I, I understand that there, there has been a spark that has awakened for you when it comes to building communities and networking. So do tell us a little bit more about a couple of uh, business leaders communities that you're chairing. One is the uh, business leaders family uh, that you have founded and the other one is the private equity collective. So I would love us to first start with the business leaders family. Tell us a little bit more about uh, what you do there and what's the added value and what obviously inspired you to start it in the first place. Do you want a short version or the long version? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we can start with the long version and then um, just extract the heart, extract the love. <laughs> I will do my best, but stop me if I go for too long because this is very much my, my purpose, my mission is to help business leaders to get their business to the next level. Mm -hmm. And Business Leader Family uh, is a community that I started three years ago because I wanted to hang out with the, uh, the best entrepreneurs in my network. I, for me, they are the heroes. I want to spend as much time as I can with them. So I invited about 15 of them to a dinner and pretty much everyone showed up and I had this like guided dinner experience when we really went into the, into the true experience of an entrepreneur, right? If you go to a networking event, oftentimes people ask you, so how is it going? And one says, oh, it's brilliant. It's amazing. Couldn't be better, right? Because we need to have this mask on so that people feel attracted to us. Uh, but it doesn't work for me. Like I, I want real. So over here, we, we really open up and said, okay, well, what are the challenges that you are facing and how are you feeling and how are you overcoming it? And what are the successes that you have achieved but haven't celebrated, which is a, a common trait for entrepreneurs. And what came out was just incredible. What I realized is most of us as uh, business leaders, managing directors, CEOs, we are kind of on our own. We are the only person in our organizations. We don't really have anyone to bounce ideas off of. But in this forum, when it's just everyone is in the same journey and is in the journey is very similar to across businesses. You can share experiences that are relevant. You can, it's so empowering to see other people going through the same challenge that you are and um, very useful to, to share the solutions that we have discovered. Otherwise we are just going through the same challenges. We are all trying to find the solutions ourselves. Uh, and you know, failing and feeling we are the only ones who have to do it. We have to do it on our own because there's no other way. So yeah, I, I love bringing people together. And from that initial dinner, we just continued doing dinners over and over. And then last year with the lockdown, I took the experience online. Gradually it grew from those 15 people to 200 uh, business leaders nowadays. And yeah, we come together and, and share the journey together. And so in terms of your experience, you're, you're an experienced business leader yourself. And like you said, you're so keen to share the knowledge. You're so keen to share um, and, and have that win-win and, and, and create those networks and make sure that you not only empower, but learn from every individual that crosses your path. Do tell us a little bit about your views on how important do you think is mentoring and, and coaching along the way as you're not only starting a business, but also evolving, expanding um, as, as a business leader? How important is that, would you say? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I've been, again, I fell into me, myself, mentoring other people. I always saw myself, you know, once I'm rich and successful and wise and all, I will be mentoring other people. But then I was around like maybe 25 years old or something like that. Uh, a friend of mine was dealing with some question or business challenge and I thought I can help him. So I basically became, became his mentor at that time. And I just loved it so much because I love asking people 
challenging questions or exploring exploratory questions and then listening and finding out and brainstorming how we could solve a, solve a problem. So mm -hmm. I've been mentoring ever since and I've mentored probably 300 uh, entrepreneurs and it's been such a rewarding journey. To the flip side, which I find very interesting, I have had a couple of mentors myself, but for me, it didn't quite work. And I was just confused. Like I see people getting so much value from them having mentors and just, yeah, they, they ask the mentors a question, they get an answer and they go and do it. And I've struggled with that a lot. Uh, it's interesting. I came up with two 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 answers to that like one is for me early on in childhood having very negative experiences with authorities like i got a guitar teacher who just made me feel terrible uh and i feel a lot of shame a lot of guilt so i kind of fought against that mm. my, and my whole life I kind of like i don't um when it comes to authorities like i i always challenge whatever they say I do that generally with, with uh, everyone. So it's difficult for me to just like take advice on, on face value. And the second thing uh, I thought uh, is, is relevant in this case for me is I am an analytical type. So when it comes to a coaching session, when a coach asks me a question, I don't know the answer. I need to think about it. Ideally, I need to sleep on it. Uh, to know the right answer and but I always feel so so bad that they are sitting there waiting for the for the answer from me kind of like they I know they want to help me but I'm like oh, I don't know how to so uh, for me the, the, co the coaching direct coaching didn't quite work for me as well but what works for me incredibly well are masterminds so communities of business leaders uh, coming together and uh, so basically it's kind of like a group coaching or, or, or group mentoring when peers are learning from each other and they are brainstorming with each other that works incredibly well and i think that's that's the really important part we understand ourselves and see what works for us um what works with our personality and then just double down on that because the impact is incredible we don't know everything and just the just having someone bounce ideas off of it someone who asks uh questions someone who challenges uh you uh, someone who holds you accountable, mm -hmm. we can't do that ourselves. That's a brilliant answer because you're completely right. We're all different, right? We, we have different backgrounds. We come from uh, different uh, parts of the world. And uh, I think it's incredibly important what you've just said to really dig deep and, and not be afraid. Be courageous enough to explore and be vulnerable and actually look at what is working and what's not. And then eventually find what is. So if we get a little bit personal now, Martin, um, I would love to hear about, you know, a mistake or, or a failure of some sort, if we can call it that way, right? That has really made you grow extremely um, in your professional and in your personal life, right? As a result of the gift that it's offered. Now, obviously, you can get as personal as you want with this one, but I would love to um, hear what has shaped you into who you are today. Good. Well, I've got lots of those. <laughs> and it's funny because in the business leaders family, I, I, I always say, so we have got a section that's focusing on um, failures slash lessons learned. Right? And I always say yeah. it's not a failure if you take the lessons out of it and the bigger the failure, the bigger, the bigger the lesson learned. And it came full circle last year when I decided to take Business Leaders Family, which pretty much had been a hobby for me, a passion project. And I thought, okay, well, let me uh, add a business model behind it, uh, let it generate more revenue so I can dedicate more time to it. And I decided to launch a membership and just say, okay, well, this is it. It's, you know, very affordable. You know, people love coming to the dinners. They love the community. Oh, everyone will sign up. And of course, it wasn't the case. <laughs> and so like the gap between my expectations and the reality was just like huge. And I felt rejected. I felt uh, not valued. It was really hard. And um, uh, yeah, like I don't deal well with rejection yet. Um, so and, and my kind of natural pattern uh, is to hit, you know, when this happens, just quit. Uh, but this time around, like the community itself kind of caught me. And I remembered my words telling to the community, 
you know, like, oh, the bigger the failure, the bigger the lesson learned. So I was like, oh, well, actually, if I say that, I can't see this as a failure. I can't, you know, hide under the blanket and just like cry. I should be extracting the lessons learned here. What, what, what have I learned over here? And it was very rewarding. It was quite specific, I guess, to, to my weaknesses. So it was about marketing and communicating value. Uh, I generally under communicate because I don't want to bother people uh -huh. uh, because I know everyone's busy, but it is important to communicate and clearly remind people we are all busy. And that's why it's important to actually keep repeating the message. It's also important to communicate with people one-to-one, -one, even though yeah, email is powerful and it's easy to send an email to the whole community or message everyone on, uh, on a WhatsApp group. The one-to-one -one touch is really important. It's important to show that, that you care about each individual. Um, and you don't necessarily need to speak with every individual, but you, know, you can narrow it down to the people who are most engaged or who will get the most value. So yeah. those were the key lessons for me. Uh, uh, the biggest lesson or the biggest gift for me was to uh, step outside of my natural pattern uh, and look it from the outside and just change it. Just basically say, okay, well, I know what I would have done normally and I choose not to. And this is the part that I want to do instead. So that self-reflection, I think, is the, the greatest gift. The enriching one. Well, what about if we now kind of go from lesson lear lessons learned? learned um, I would love to know what are some ways with which you make sure that you're productive in business, right? You, you're kind of now... Um, juggling or, or leading a couple of things or even, you know, three pretty big things at once. Um, how are you managing that? And if we swapped phones for a day, what sort of apps, productivity apps or uh, tools would I find uh, that would help me out if I was in your shoes? Uh, great. I was just looking for my phone thinking, um, what do I <laughs> there? It's, it's less for me about technology. It's much more about the process. So I have uh, tried in the past number of, um, you know, get stuff done tools. Uh, I, I use Asana. Mm -hmm. I use also Evernote. But the tools themselves are kind of useless. The most important thing is the process. So that works for me. So I do a, a weekly plan, basically the, the to-do list of what I want to achieve in a, in a week. I have got my quarterly goals. And the most important part for me in terms of getting stuff done is the accountability. So I've got a mastermind, uh, mastermind group uh, where we actually, I've got a mastermind buddy. So it's two of us and we meet on a weekly basis. We go kind of in depth one hour and something we introduced recently or midway last year is uh, book ending. So we catch up every morning. We basically have a quick call five minutes, what are you doing today? Okay, this is it. And then uh, 6 p.m., we have another call. How did it go? So it's very much like focus every single day. There's been a game changer, like having someone, knowing that there's someone who will ask me at the end of the day whether I achieved what I set out to achieve is incredibly, that's, when you speak about productivity, that's the most productivity, the key lever for me uh, to get stuff done. Amazing. And so what about uh, books and education and investing in your own knowledge and uh, expansion of, you know, the horizons uh, that exist before we learn something new? Is there a training or a business or a leadership book or any of that that you would recommend to our listeners uh, who are very hungry for new knowledge? Yeah, I've, I've got a number of books that I keep recommending to my mentees. Uh, the, the two that I recommend the the most are actually three. Uh, it depends on the on the business. So if it, if you are building a startup, something that doesn't exist yet, Running Lean by Ash Moria uh, is a best manual I know about. You know, step by step, how do you build a, a startup uh, Running Lean? Uh, if it's an established business, something that already exists, um, then the Pumpkin Plan by my Mikalovic. Love the guy, like he is a real champion for entrepreneurs. Like check check that guy out, the Pumpkin Plan, brilliant book. It's kind of like a, a new version of the email, a uh, little bit um, more modern. 
and in a similar fashion, uh, traction. Uh, I think it's Gino. Uh, Gino Michael, I think I might be wrong, but the, the book is called Traction, and it it's, uh, it writes about the entrepreneurial or entrepreneurs operating system, uh, and it's just like a very nice framework of what are the key elements that an entrepreneur needs to focus on in order to grow their business. Mm-hmm. These three books definitely highly recommend. Amazing. And so, Martin, if you went back right all the way back to when you started and uh, you met your younger self what is one or two pieces of advice that you would give to that younger self today how much younger self (laughs) (laughs) well that's up to you (laughs) um well one one would be keep keep talking to the people that are already in your network. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, I generally under communicate and I reach out to people when there is something important to, uh, to, 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 to do or something to uh, someone to connect them with. So I'm very pragmatic in that way, but I feel that's definitely some area where I'm missing out. So yeah, keep talking to the people in your network. Uh, there's so much value in just catching up, understanding where they are. Uh, and be curious and build stronger relationships. So that would be my advice for myself. Uh, and another one which I'm working on at the moment is ask for help. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I don't do that uh, or I haven't done it very much, but I can again see how much impact and how much value it can create for myself, but also for the people who uh, get asked to, to help. Like it's incredible when we can help someone with something that we are good at. So give people opportunity to, to help. Martin, this was amazing. I wish we had more time to continue chatting, but in, in case anyone wants to reach out to you, where can they find you? What are some good um, sources of contact that you would like to leave with us? Oh, pure, purely LinkedIn is the best place for me. It's the only social network that I'm active on, uh, quite active on LinkedIn, but that's the best place, Martin Zeman. Uh, if you search for me, uh, I'm the guy with the data. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, thank you so much for being our guest. Is there uh, an, ending, an ending thought or a quote or a wish that you would like to leave with our audience? I wish that every entrepreneur had a small community of other entrepreneurs that they share the journey with. That I, it's my wish, it's my mission, it's my passion. That I feel is very important. So yeah, connect with other entrepreneurs and share the journey. That's amazing. And I really wish that all that comes true for you. Thank you so much for being our guest and for taking the time. And uh, again, everyone who has listened to this podcast, you're more than welcome to join Martin's business leaders, family, and obviously reach out to him. Martin, again, thank you very much for your time. And hopefully we'll have you back very soon. Thank you for having me. If you like this video, give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you want to be notified every single time that I post new content, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and that bell next to it. It's totally free. I'll see you next week.